Department of Corrections, A.T. Wall. Appreciate your coming in today. Well, thank you, Kate. Because this is the farewell tour. You're going to be retiring at the end of the month, going off to bigger and better things. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you've been in the system for so long. You've been director since 2000. You've been involved with criminal reform justice since the 80s. True. <laughs> so you have been around. And let's talk a little bit. You know, I was joking with Bob Wickham when he came in. The governor's giving her state of the state next week. Yes, she is. So this, I want this to be, what's the state of the Department of Corrections in Rhode Island as you leave and someone comes in to replace you? Well, thank you for asking. What I can say is that the Department of Corrections has evolved a great deal since I first joined it back in the 1980s. Uh, after some 30 plus years in corrections, 18 of them as director, I'm feeling pretty good about the progress that we've made and how we've evolved. And talk with us a little bit as well, you know, maybe let's go through a couple of, you know, both from a facility standpoint. Let's go from bricks, bricks and mortar to, to where things stand with actual, you know, justice reform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has the state made investments and improvements to fully, uh, you know, undertake the task at hand for the system here in the state? There are a lot of competing priorities mm -hmm. in state government, and I wouldn't say that uh, we are consistently at the head of the line. Uh, what I can tell you is that we have made, uh, I think, great strides uh, in the last couple of decades that I feel as if we've got a department of which the public can be proud. It is safe, it is clean, it's quiet, it's orderly. Inmates are being properly managed. Staff is professional. Uh, it's looking pretty good right now. And let's talk about the, pre the preparation of those who are incarcerated for re-entry into society. What have the changes been for both investments and training and education that you've seen during your time as director? I think we've made a lot of progress in that area. I think we've traditionally been thought of as uh, custody. That is to say somebody is either accused of a crime and held in our institutions or convicted of a crime and doing a sentence there. That is the way people frequently consider the Department of Corrections. We look at it somewhat differently. We see it as an opportunity for us to work with people who have committed crimes, uh, who have exhibited antisocial behavior, and to prepare them to be productive and law-abiding once they are released. And while some people might say it's a tall order, what I can also tell you is that they've got time on their hands and our job is to make sure that it's used productively. And have we seen that correlate with recidivism? Have we seen numbers that show the investments made inside the prison walls to enable, again, formerly incarcerated individuals to get back on the street? Have we seen recidivism numbers go down or have they stayed? We have seen them go down. It's an interesting situation because we provide these programs, uh, we give people incentives to take the programs, and as it turns out, uh, what we've noticed over the last few years as we've become more sophisticated about the philosophical, psychological underpinnings of these programs, we've discovered that, in fact, recidivism has gone down. Our census has declined significantly in the last several years. And I want to talk with you about some of the issues both facing society and the Department of Corrections, and one of them in particular, the opioid crisis. Yes. And dealing with those types of crimes, criminals, but folks who might have addiction issues. Mm -hmm. How has that changed since your time as the director? It's changed a lot. Governor Raimondo, when she entered office, uh, took a look at the stats and realized that overdose deaths are significant contributor to the overall mortality rate in the state of Rhode Island. And we feel very proud of the confidence that Governor Raimondo has placed in us. She recognized there needed to be treatment, that it needed to be something that could be done um, easily, uh, could be made available. And she, in her first budget, appropriated uh, about two and a half million dollars directly to the DOC. 
in order to work with those inmates who have opioid addictions and to get them straightened out, squared away, and ready to reemerge into society uh, with those demons having been left behind. Is that one of the biggest cost factors within the prisons is being able to help and accommodate these individuals that come in that need a lot of help and assistance, especially if an addiction is involved? Sure. No question that those who come in uh, with serious addictions do need help. We see a lot of people that uh, have not really come to terms with the addictions that they have. They will attempt to smuggle it in. Uh, sometimes they'll succeed. Uh, sometimes they will overdose. Certainly as they're going back to the community, there's a risk that they will overdose quickly because they have no longer self-regulated the way they did that when they were in our custody. Mm. And speaking of drugs as well, let's talk a little bit about the state of marijuana. Here we are, it's 2018. We did just see the directive from Attorney General Jeff Sessions about the federal government's continued predominance over states and the legality of it. But you see on both sides, you see the folks who want to see it legalized saying that it would reduce the number of folks in prisons by lieu of it being legal. What's, what's your sense when you hear that argument and the debate in general over marijuana legalization? Everybody has an opinion and <laughs> I have my own. I am not an enthusiast for the widespread use of marijuana in the absence of, say, medical need. I've seen too many people whose lives have been ruined by their inability to modulate their consumption of that kind of drug. So I would prefer that it not be the case, and we certainly don't encourage it uh, or even, frankly, tolerate it while people are in our custody. When they leave, it's another matter, but we do have community-based supervision. Probation and parole officers uh, assigned to inmates who are leaving the adult correctional institutions and who are doing really good work in keeping them on track. Let's go, let's talk about the youth and let's talk about the approach to corrections and prisons in the state. What's your sense of restorative justice, what they're doing in schools to address kids who might have issues you know, while they're in the K through 12 system. What's your sense of, is restorative justice going to be a success? I'm impressed that you know about restorative justice. It's not uh, a concept that everybody is talking about all the time, but I think it is very meaningful. One of the things we want to do when people who have led antisocial lives come into our system is to give them opportunities to shift, uh, to pivot in the direction of being more productive, feeling as if they are not separated from society, that they are in fact individuals who have the ability and capability, if they so choose, to wean their way off, uh, say, marijuana. And our staff is there to help. So again, as you look back over the career that you've had with the head, as the head of Department of Corrections, what are you most proud of? I think the department has evolved in ways that are impressive and are satisfying. When I first joined uh, the department, which was, what, some 30 plus years ago, when I first joined the department, I was uh, struck by the fact that there weren't a lot of opportunities uh, being afforded inmates to better their lives and to take advantage of the fact that they're in custody. The merry-go-round has stopped. They can start to work on their issues. And what we needed to do was make sure that the programs we were providing were aligned with the needs that they had if they were going to kick the habit, so to speak. And I think we've done a good job of that. I think the culture in the institutions is uh, far more steady and stable. Uh, I think I might have mentioned before that the institutions are, contrary to some people's belief, uh, clean, orderly, safe. You will see lots of inmates doing productive things there. Uh, and given that it is a correctional system, that's pretty impressive. And what type of advice would you give to your 
next to who's going to be taking and filling in your footsteps. So what would you say? What I would say is that uh, I have had a great run uh, during my years in corrections and certainly uh, during my time and tenure as director for the past 18 or so. What I would uh, tell them is that they too can make their mark once they determine what it is that they want their tenure to represent and that uh, there can be great opportunities to help people lead pro-social lives, uh, lives that are uh, free from the scourge of crime. And finally, have to ask, what's next for A.T. Wall? <laughs> uh, well, A.T. Wall uh, will be retiring uh, in uh, the next few weeks. The last day at work will likely be uh, this January the 30th, and last day on the payroll uh, will be mid-February. I will say that my wife, who is Portuguese, uh, decided that uh, she was going to take matters into her hands and uh, make sure that we got the rest and vacation that we deserved. So she bought uh, four tickets uh, for an airline. and. Uh, the first set is for the trip over to Lisbon on the 31st of January, and the other two are reserved for the trip back, which will occur on February 28th. <laughs> so if we're not feeling relaxed and, uh, and refreshed by the end of that vacation, uh, maybe there's not a lot that can be done for us. <laughs> so you going to take a well-needed break after your tenure with the Department of Corrections. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to come in and let folks know a little bit what's going on behind the walls, as you said, if they don't get there, to tell them what's happened, what's happened under your tenure, but anything else while you're still here that you want folks to know. Corrections has traditionally been surrounded by a lot of mystery and a lot of myth. I believe that uh, consistent with custody, that's always paramount if people uh, don't feel safe or if the surrounding community doesn't feel safe, then there's not a lot of good that can be accomplished. But leaving that aside, I believe that corrections affords a real opportunity for those individuals who get caught in the net and then make the commitment that this is not the way they want to live their lives. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to come in as you are winding down your career as director. Director Wall, thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. I'll let you walk around the corner, go back to the tasks at hand, and we'll welcome our next guest here to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Yes.